If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of oh, yeah. Mind Pump, we actually did half the episode without our fearless producer. Oh man, here we go. Doug. So it gets a little rough towards the end us. of it. Yeah. Uh, for the first 30 well, minutes or so, well. Adam, Justin, and myself do our typical intro of uh, bullshitting conversation. We talk about- You know you love it. Corey Feldsman's lost list. What the fuck? Dude, he- uh, Hollywood's going down! He called out a bunch of Hollywood scumbags. burning. In 1993. In LA down there. It dude, is, on for real. On top of all this other stuff. Wow. Yeah, crazy. Right. Crazy. He called out a bunch of people in 1993 to the police department. They apparently lost it that list and now it's miraculously resurfaced kind of crazy we talk about adam's spotify playlist yeah we talk about justin and adam's emotional meltdown <laughs> oh man <laughs> oh it gets yeah. good cry that was like awkward a, cry like a baby we yeah. talk about men and women and their emotions um i mentioned our sponsor organifi and their new gold juice this is a new one it's turmeric ginger turkey tail it's got reishi it's relaxing uh, I enjoy it. If you go to OrganifiShop.com, enter the code MindPump, you will get a special discount. We also mention our other sponsor, Thrive Market, uh, who we love very much. They sell non-GMO organic products mm. at ridiculous discounts. Open up some goodies today. You go yeah. to ThriveMarket.com .com forward slash MindPump, uh, you're going to get some awesome stuff. You're going to get, uh, let's see, a month free membership, $20 off your first three orders of $49 or more and free shipping. And then we get into the questions. The first question was, you know, we talk a lot about the importance of weight training. And this particular individual is a triathlete and finds it very difficult to fit it all in. What sort of strength training do we recommend for this person who's doing so much triathlete stuff? Triathlism. I just made up that word. <laughs> next question Put was that with electronical. Ne- right. yeah, next question was uh, this We're person's on the glossary. <laughs> this person's friend told them that adaptation isn't as important as a progressive overload. Well, that doesn't make sense, and that they essentially called it bro science and claimed that you could just always stay low reps as long as you're adding weight, and you'll get all the results. Yeah, bro, you desire. Uh, I Tell think your buddy, Mind Pump Adam, calls him a knucklehead. Yeah. Probably a meatball. Yeah. Yep. Next question was, what is our opinion on physical therapists instructing clients to take time off completely from the gym? Do we think things like uh, shin splints or less severe injuries should be rehabbed while continuing to work out in the gym, or should you take weeks completely off? I tell you what. Do most PTs suck? Yeah. I tell you what. Maps Prime Pro. But yeah. If you've got an injury or you're rehabbing something, Prime Pro, that's your jam. That's right. the place to do yeah. it. The final question is, jam. how do we balance science with anecdote? Obviously, we hear anecdote all the time, and then there's scientific study. Science has useful studies and good it's information. It's a fine line, Joe. It's a fine line. But are they practical in real-world situations? Mm-hmm. Sometimes anecdotes seem to trump yeah. Science Use is that your own critical thinking. The case. Uh, also, we're in December. You know what that means? That means next month you're going to get serious about fitness or real serious about fitness. Now you're already ahead of the game because you're listening to Mind Pump, and we applaud you. You're better than most people. Yeah. Uh, but uh, as we know, January everybody gets crazy with fitness. Check this out. If you're really serious about getting started into fitness, enroll in our super bundle. Our super bundle includes several of our MAPS programs, all discounted at 30% off. It's literally one year of exercise programming planned out for you. In other words, if you start today, you've got everything planned out for you, workouts and phases of your workouts, different adaptations. you got video demos of all the exercises, us instructing you for an entire year. So this time next year, you're going to be stronger, faster, sexier, better. You're just going to be better with that exercise Super expert bangable. expert exercise programming. For more information on that program and our other programs, go to mindpumpmedia.com. It's t-shirt time. Oh, t-shirt time. How many, how many reviews this time, Doug? 
We had 13 reviews. Okay, no, lucky no, number 13. Not bad, not bad. I think luck, I think 13 is a bad luck number, actually. No, it's not. No, I think it is. In, 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 in my culture, it's good luck. No, they, they say like the stairs, like if you have 13 steps, you're oh, supposed yeah. to skip the 13th oh, step. Oh, yeah, 13 is bad luck here, but in, in it, for Italians, it's good luck. <laughs> is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we'll take that one. I think that I might have just made that up. <laughs> I think you did. Let's hear it, Doug. <laughs> All right, we have four shirts going out. The first one up is Delightini. Sounds Italian. Mm. Sounds delightful. I know. Mind Pump Life. J Findo eight eight four and Choda Stain. All of you are winners. <laughs> what is that last one? Chode Choda Stain. Oh, that sounds horrible. I like that. Oh, Chode Stain. Oh, it's Chode Stain. I'm oh, sorry. Chode Stain. Oh, 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 oh. I I read it <laughs> wrong. I oh, it's bad. <laughs> All right, so all of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. Thanks, everybody. That's right. We got you. I really like this. What is it? Bai? Yeah, B-A-I. Do, no. they, do, do they sell that at Thrive Market? No, the no. The Bai no. infused? No, I don't think so. Really? No artificial sweeteners. I bet it's, they do. Maybe what? Doug can look it up. What? The buy coconut infused. What it is that? It says no artificial sweeteners. I know, but that's what I'm saying. Maybe it's sold in Thrive Market then. Oh, oh, you mean, oh. Yeah, I'm I wondering what the price is. You got, where'd you get that one? At the gas station? Yeah, I was just getting gas this morning. I wanted something to drink and I wanted something different. And I saw this coconut coconut flair and it's really good. What are mm. the ingredients? It doesn't have much in it, man. Coconut water, natural flavoring, potassium, white tea extract, citric acid, sea salt, Coffee, coffee fruit extract. That's yeah, that's smart to put salt in there. Mm. When you have a little bit of sweet and you throw mm-hmm. a little balances, little a little bit, bit of salt, oh, mm-hmm. dude, it's really good. Good chefs know that combo. Mm-hmm. Like, I've, that I haven't had, I've amount. never had one before. You never had one before? No, I have, you know, I think Doug I, was drinking them all weekend. Were you? I saw him drink like two of them. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Have you tried the coconut flavor one yet? Yeah. Oh man, fuck, this is mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm. I'm, I, I'm not into. Flavors of like I'm not into drinking flavors. I just it's water for me. Mm. I'm, I'm not a big like I don't know. Water's a little plain for me. Really? Mm. Yeah. It's because yeah. you you did years of yes, yeah, like <laughs> gallons. Of you no, know, I did years <laughs> of <laughs> gallons of water. Is what mm. I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. fucking water, oh, water, yeah, water. Yeah. Just got sick of it. Oh, dude, I was you over water. T- yeah, man. It's yeah. been nice to have it. You know, although I'm gonna say that you know my bicep strength is decreased a lot dude not carrying around them gall- oh, God. gallons of water all the time oh, God. frequency bro I'm telling you Trigger oh, God, carry, carry gallon jugs around every single day fucking frequency <laughs> dude yeah my shit's dwindling away got uh, spaghetti arms now dude oh man got basketball player arms now so you know how uh, you know it helps you right your biceps get in the way when you try and shoot is yeah. that what they say yeah it's true that's why man. I have trouble so <clears throat> is that why yeah too much um too much biceps. Too much biceps. Too much, yeah, because it's like it's like a dart. I'm too buffed. When you do it, <laughs> it's yeah. like a no, pl- I'm not that buffed. Like but I did win at horse against you guys. I you just want to, you know what it is. You really pushed it. We forward. get we get new listeners all the time. And so you want to reiterate show. the that one time that one yeah. day back in 1997 yeah. when all the stars aligned. <laughs> so just for, well because they don't you know, know right? the respectable sport of horse. they don't know so. Yeah. Pig. There's so in horse. Adam, Justin, and I've been working together for three years. Love these guys. Absolutely love them. They're like my brothers. We have yet to. We hadn't ever competed head to head at a sport. Right. We've never done that before. And uh, Adam has been an athlete his entire life. Yeah. Justin, we all, we all worked out ahead of time. Justin was a collegiate athlete. Yeah. Um, you know, both extremely experienced. I didn't play any sports. I'm just a regular guy, I guess. Uh, maybe I have. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I have natural talent. I don't know, um, but we never I don't competed. Like the direction where this is we never going. competed in anything. I like how he's setting the stage, though. And, yeah. and uh, you know, because we're not competitive necessarily with each other, because we're all good friends and all that stuff. And so uh, we were in uh, in in Vegas, Reno, in Reno. Excuse me, the other Vegas. Yeah, and <laughs> the other one. The, 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 yeah, the, the ugly Vegas. And uh, you know, it's, they were like, "Hey, let's play horse," you know, because they're like, "Let's make fun of Sal because we're so athletic and he's not." <laughs> It's and, out, it's like, yeah, wait, and yeah. um, killed him. It was. It wasn't even. That, it wasn't even close. <laughs> killed. It wasn't even close. Oh, wow, it was a massacre. So, uh, and you know, the best part is we recorded it. So if you go to YouTube, our Mind Pump channel, uh, our, our channel Mind Pump TV, it's buried in there somewhere. It's in oh, there, man. and you'll see archives. me winning the competition. And uh, till this day, Justin and Adam are very angry about that, and they've been trying to get me to play basketball Not ever really. since. I mean, I, but I refuse. Yeah. There's no reason. Like I just won. I won. There's you're no the way champion. to play. No I don't want to play. I want you to. I want you to feel like you're a winner. You know, I really do. 
And so, <laughs> like, that was one of those things. Hey, did you guys see all the fires going on in L.A. right now? What's going on yeah. over there? Dude. Did, did you see the video that uh, Joe Rogan posted? Yeah, I've seen that now, like, 50 times on everyone's page. I actually thought that was- It looks of, like hell. Yeah, I thought yeah. that was out of Joe Rogan's car. I can't believe they didn't shut the freeways uh, down when it's that close. That's weird to me. I don't know. Yeah, that was right on. That can't that. be. That can't be a smart strategy. Right on the side of the road, driving through a you know burning fields on both sides and L.A. traffic. All the embers just flying over your yeah, head. Could you imagine how fucking scared you'd be? <laughs> like, Dude, all of a sudden, you get bumper to bumper L.A. traffic and there's fires on both sides of you. It looked yeah. like hell. It like, looks like the apocalypse. Like, uh-huh. It literally was happening. Have you guys ever seen like a legit house fire and stuff up close? Yeah, you have. Oh yeah. What's is that so crazy? In, in Colorado. Uh, <clears throat> you, we see these the th- thunderstorms. So almost every house has uh, um, lightning, lightning rods. rods yeah, on of it. yeah, on top of yeah, on top of their on top of your house, right? So it hits that before it hits, <clears throat> hits your house, very much. But some don't, and some will strike and hit a field that's kind of grassy or like that, and then it'll, it'll go, bounce off. And oh yeah, you. dude, it's crazy. We wow. we would stand we would stand in our in our garage, and now we had a lightning rod, so I felt safe, right? So if it was, anything came close to us, it would hit our house before it hit me. And we would stand stand in the garage and we'd watch lightning striking all around around our house. It was fucking. And, but you saw a house catch fire. Oh yeah, no, I've seen houses catch fire before for sure. Wow. When yeah. I was a, when I was a kid, my dad uh, came home from work one day. I was real young, and our neighbors not our exact neighbor, but like down the street, house was hell of smoke was coming out of. And I remember this as a kid because it was shocking to me. Because the smoke that's produced from a from a fire in a house is very thick and dark and acrid, like it's it's different, right, than what you'd see when you like make a fire, a campfire. Yeah. So I remember all the smoke coming out, and there were all these neighbors gathered around the house. This is a crazy story, and everybody was just standing around looking at the house, waiting for the fire department to show up. And so my dad takes off, and I had to stay at home. But the story goes, my dad goes over there, and he says, "Is there anybody in the house?" And everybody says, we don't know. Nobody went in the house to check. And my dad's like, well, someone needs to go in there and check. So he got a blanket and he sprayed it with a hose, covered himself, went in the house, two kids. What? Are you kidding me? True story. Two what? Ki- no way. Two kids in the I house. I never told that story. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So two kids in the house. He's a superhero. Um, one of the kids was like 10 or 11. The other one was eight. And I guess they were in the hallway. They were, and they were just on the like, like huddled in the hallway, just crying. Oh my god! Because they were so scared. Yeah. So my dad runs in, grabs these kids, like l- picks them up, runs out with them, and then the fire department shows up, and then the mom shows up. So the mom had taken off to go to the store for, you know, 20, 30 minutes. Left her eleven year old, which wasn't that out of the ordinary when we were kids. You know, no, when we were kids, yeah. it was no, very was normal. The usual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could leave an eleven year old who's responsible at home. Anyway, she, uh, she. My dad says she sees the the crowd and the fire department, and he and he says she was this overweight lady. He's like she ran so fast, and she kept falling because she was trying to move so fast, and she was panicking and screaming, and people were trying to like help her, and she was because she knew her kids were in there, and so my dad's like, "I found your kids, I got your kids," and then so till this day, wow, that's till, powerful, man, very powerful. So so the, so the kid now, the eleven year old now is, uh, you know, he's got kids of his of his own, and he's a like grown man. Like, yeah, he's, like, he's, like, he's like my age, right? Or maybe a little older, because I think I was probably nine. So he's in, his, he's like 40, 40 something. And uh, those guys, man, those they, they they look at my dad like he's just like the greatest. Does he still see them or hear from them? If if he if they come over to their mom's house because she she still lives there, and my dad's outside and they see him, they'll definitely come over, oh, talk God, to that's him. Crazy. Yeah, mm-hmm. isn't that a weird, crazy story? Fuck, that's crazy. That's story. Awesome. Yeah, I forgot all about that. And in my dad was the other night we were over there, and my sister had her boyfriend over, and so my dad's telling stories. And he's a really good storyteller, and he's starting to tell a story. And I totally forgot about this because we hadn't talked about it for so long. Pretty crazy, but I'd never seen. Yeah, I'd never seen. I was the only time, first and only time I'd ever seen a house mm-hmm. on fire. Pretty that, crazy. Yeah, I never had anybody. I never saw. Pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. There. So I know lately we've been talking about how Hollywood stars and shit are getting fucking crushed. Oh yeah, <laughs> like sexual harassment and just all kinds. Of, like they're going down, right? Yeah. Yeah. So check this out. So you guys know who Corey Feldman is. Oh, I was going to say Corey Feldman. He like released a list or something, right? So Corey Feldman, who was one of the child actors of the- He was the 80s like guy. Him and Corey the, Haim. The other Corey. Yeah, they the were like, yeah, they were in like uh, the Lost, Lost Boys, Boys together mm-hmm. and 
couple other movies together. Uh, mm-hmm. Goonies. Weren't they in Goonies together? No. Or is that not just Corey Haynes? Corey's. Yeah, just, just Corey. Corey. But they were in like movies together and they were like they represented the 80s pretty, pretty well and they were deep in there. Like and Breakfast Club, all that kind of genre. Apparently, so Corey Feldman has been talking about the the like pedophilia and shit that happens in Hollywood for a long time, but everybody's ignored him, mm. called him crazy, whatever. Corey Haim, as you guys know, committed suicide mm-hmm. not that long ago. And Corey Feldman's like the guy was the poor guy was like tormented and he witnessed Corey Haim being abused or whatever as a kid, a child <laughs> actor. And he says it's back disgusting. in so he said on a TV show, I forgot what show it was, that back in nineteen ninety three he literally made a list to the Santa Barbara uh, police officers or, ca- or you know, county sheriffs, I think. He told them on audio and gave a list of all the predators in Hollywood. He literally said, this person, this person, and he named these big players. Nothing was ever done with it. Oh, in wow. fact, they said that this audio was lost. They said, we don't have it. We don't know what you're talking about, right? So this is something that's... Like I've known about for a while because Got brushed under the rug. Yeah, like it, and people saying he's crazy, this and that. Guess what they just found? Oh mm-hmm. shit! They found the audio of nineteen 1990- ninety in nineteen ninety three Corey Feldman audio of him naming these alleged sexual predators. How many? Uh, at, you know what? It doesn't say, but he he calls out like big players. Big, big players. What? How crazy is that that they said, oh, we can't find it. Now all of a sudden, like, we have it. It just feeds right more into the conspiracy, man. Something is going on. I believe it. It's a war. I seriously think it's Trump. I swear to God, dude. Did you read the- I think he's going after the celebrities. Did you see the the jiu-jitsu guy that we were tagged in about um, our boy Aubrey over at On It? Did you see that? Whoa. What was this? Talk about conspiracy? Is he trolling? I don't know. He's got to be trolling. I don't know. So, someone told me that he. W- I asked around about him to some of our other like jujitsu guys and buddies, and they said he's supposed to be a respected guy in the community in the Brazilian jujitsu. He has a decent following. Yeah, had like an apparel company. I don't know anything about him. I don't know what his last name. Travis Nawaza. That's his page on the yeah. on Instagram. No, he had done a post. Which, is it still up there? No, it's gone. Oh, it is taken down. Uh, oh shit! Oh, that means I'm they on got, his page. Oh, that means they got him. I wonder if he's making. I mean, he's got to be trolling. Of course, dude. Trolling. Of course, he is. He was just that, fucking around for sure. I guarantee. I bet you Aubrey got it pulled down. I but wonder. then it got on Reddit and stuff. I guess he was making. He was saying the reason why he wasn't included in the EBI tournament or something because he wouldn't have sex with Aubrey <laughs> <laughs> or be a part of his cult or Damn, something. Damn, I wonder what. I wonder how he got punked, dude. He got punked for that, didn't he? Either that or it was all a joke amongst everybody. Yeah. You know uh, that's a pretty fucked up joke. You know why it's a fucked up joke? Or what's crazy about it is because, you know, Aubrey's all open about his open relationship. Right, and right. He talks about all that stuff and polyamory or whatever they call it. So people were, some people, you know, people were buying it. Right. You know what I mean? They're like, yeah. no, this is true. This is definitely, this has got to be true. Well, I mean, yeah, a lot of what they said that there's a, he's got like a cold. He tried to sleep with him. Like, well, some of these things aren't too far stretched. Ayahuasca, he brought up. It's like, he openly talks so about Ayahuasca. It, it's, it's not he some, openly talks yeah. about fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like, so those aren't that not believable. I, I believe all that. But I mean, I thought it was kind of funny that it's, he's got a decent sized page too to say that kind of stuff. Right. Well, it looks like he got some backlash. I didn't know it was pulled down already. Yeah, I don't see it. On it lasted two yeah. lasted two days maybe. But it, there was a whole Reddit. The heat uh, must have come down. There was yeah. a whole Reddit thread about it, and well, I think we're heading down to on it um, in January. I think we're scheduled Meet with our boy Kyle. Yeah, I think we're gonna head down there and go see go see them. They're gonna interview us on the on it podcast now that Kyle is the uh, director of. Human performance? Human. human performance. Is that what it is? Yeah. I don't know. So many so, titles. They got a lot of titles over there. They, they do. They have a lot of titles yeah. over there. So we're, we'll be there. We'll be there. So we, we should give a title to like Taylor and Drew to make them feel. I know. You know what I mean? We like haven't them, done a good job like with that. director of, yeah. Yeah, director of YouTube relations. <laughs> <laughs> YouTuber community. <laughs> yeah, you know I'm It just sounds so funny. I even think like YouTuber is, is fu- sounds weird. Like I've heard people refer to themselves. Oh, I'm a YouTuber. I'm a YouTuber, yeah. man. I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever say that. We're getting, we're getting old. Uh, what are we? We're podcasters? Getting, yeah. Just yeah. Podcasting podcasters hard. and YouTubers? Yeah. That's it. Podcast yeah. hard. That's what it. Are you, but you're a blogger too though. Yeah. And a trainer. Fuck, bro. I'm a trainer. I'm going to put that on my resume. Yeah. Trainer, blogger, YouTuber, fucking yeah. Instagrammer. You know what? <laughs> Program writer. <laughs> fucking. Uh, you know what, though? Tweeter. You tweeter. know what, though? <laughs> you know what podcaster makes me, re- reminds me cool of? Cool guy. When yeah. someone says podcaster, it, it reminds me of like when someone would say, 
author or artist. Like, let's say you're a- Ooh, wow, you're putting us up there with that? No, 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 no. No, no, let me tell you why. <laughs> let me tell you why. Let's say you're a, you're a dad, right? Your daughter's, you know, you know 17. The modern renaissance man. Let's say your daughter's 17. She okay. brings home some guy. She's going to start dating. Dad, I really like him. He's so awesome. And, you know, he's- He's a, you know, he's a great guy, whatever. And he comes in and you're like, Hey, so, you know, so what's your, you know, what do you do? What do you want to do or whatever? And he's like, Oh, I'm, you know, I want to be an artist or I want to be a podcaster. In your mind, you're thinking unemployed. This guy's never going to, he's never going to make any money. That's why I said that. Not because I think we're awesome. Oh, because because uh, I I feel like a lot of people people say they're podcasters, (laughs) you know, especially these days. It's growing right now. It is like a gold rush. It's growing. I'm, I'm, uh, it's, I'm excited though for that. I love, I I love seeing that. I think there, I think you're weak if you're, if you feel threatened by other people coming. Oh, we encourage it. There's probably, I think we have a ton now. I mean, when we first started, there was like a handful, Mm -hmm. but I've seen at least, 20 well, especially to 30, in the fitness space. 20 to like 30 nothing. people that have started podcasts now that yeah. are like started after they listen to Mind Pump and then they've been they've been doing their own thing now and watch them kind of do it grow and keep going. So I love it. I love it because yeah, it's, it's, crazy it's only going to grow the market. It's going to grow the awareness of yeah. fitness. It's podcasting is great because, you, you know, you can just Anybody can get into yeah, it. Anybody can go, but then they're going to figure out real quickly. Like, There's a lot wow, more to it. We actually have to put a lot into this. There's a lot more into it. Everything yeah. from the equipment, the sound, the production. Oh, there's. Well, it's, it's very how you run an very, episode. It's very free market esque. Yeah, oh, I, I love it. That's the, why we like it so much. And Spotif- very, Spotify right. now, right? Isn't Spotify like looking at podcasts pretty big now? That well, is interesting. According, to, right? according to Douglas, we should be on there in two weeks. Yeah. Because if you think of like. Basically, iTunes just by itself, right? iTunes, like, who downloads any songs anymore? Yeah, you know, everybody streams, and who's the best at streaming? Yeah, Spotify. So it, it just sound, it just seems like it, it would make a lot of sense to stay on that platform. <clears throat> so who knows how good it's going to do podcast wise? Dude, I just got back on my Spotify, and it, it's they've already evolved the business in the short time that I kind of took a little break from it. Like I, I lost my password, like I don't know, six months ago. It's already a lot better. Oh, dude, there. I mean, they. I, we talked already about how they signed with Waves and stuff, or uh, Waves, Waves. Yeah. But just the functionality of the app, and then like all the options that you have now, and the connectability through people, it's like, super smooth. It is very smooth. And Here's it's this is very what, cool. This is what I love about the internet is that it's so free that people jump into it, and you look at like. You know, three years ago, I would have said Pandora. Pandora is going to run rule the music market. Totally. But somebody else has figured out a better way to do it, and now they're taking over. Mm-hmm. Like Spotify's legit superior to. Yeah, I agree. To Pandora, I, I, I much prefer Spotify. Amazon's well, got or, music. Amazon uh, Prime Music. <coughs> See that Pan- too. Pandora used to be. Uh, I used to like Pandora because it was like listening to the radio, but it yeah. was to you. It's well, more Sp- for lazy people. Spotify yeah. has that feature now. Yeah, so Spot- Spotify has the radio feature it's like now. like Instagram so, now having stories. So it's like literally Snapchat. Yes. Yeah. Didn't you make a music playlist on Spotify? Yeah, yeah. So I, I my Spotify uh, handle is the, my old handle. Uh, we love to hate Adam. So we love and then the number two and then hate Adam. And then I this made- This is all jams from when you were- I didn't know. I did a bunch. So I have, I have rock. I have hip hop. I have, uh, I even have my like easy listening when I'm smoking weed fucking yeah. playlist. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, no. I, I have listen? rock and like yeah. sublime. You yeah. That kind of, yeah. What's I have your, a what's yours? Lists, so I don't remember my handle. I'll have to get back to you, but yeah. Terrible promoter. Yeah, no. <laughs> You can you can find me on there, yeah. yeah. But I, you know, then I did my I'll, I'll my high school playlist. I'll put it on the forum. Okay, there you go. I I was once I got back on Spotify and I was firing the count back up. I kind of cleaned it up for if people were to be because I I've never used it to try and have an audience of people that would be sharing my playlist. Yeah. I always just used it for myself personally, but now that they make it the interaction and the connectivity to people like that, I think is really. Oh, cool. you know, I was, love it. I used to share back and forth with my brother because he was like trying to like show me like an artist he was stoked on or whatever. It's great, man. So you were playing uh, when we were driving back from um, Chico. Adam was playing his playlist, yeah. and it was all songs that it's like the reminiscent mix. Or, yeah, and then there was what song was it that came on, Justin? Where you're like, oh fuck, this song made me cry hella hard once. What was that? Song? Oh yeah, it was from Stay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, like, oh my God, what song was that? It was the one that was like breakthrough really, like, or breaking. Uh, I know it's when you're talking anyway, about. Anyway, like, break the cycle. Off yeah, that CD. yeah. So yeah. what happened? Super with that? <laughs> sad. It's so funny because like I remember distinctively, and we, we were talking about that movie that you had just watched, yeah. and like how everybody's sobbing in that movie. And I'm like, dude, I haven't like allowed myself to cry. <laughs> you know, like I always hold it, like like I bury that shit. 
And uh, so, like, I was in Chicago, and it was fucking freezing. And, you know, like, I had just, like, moved away from my girlfriend, but I was still trying to keep it working. And uh, Were you all in love with her? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. It was, like, a four- or five-year thing, you know? And, like, all through, like, my high school. It was, like, the high school, uh, you know, first love thing. And so I'm out there trying to kind of recreate, like make a name for myself, do my own thing. She went to Cal Poly. I'm like, I'm going to go do my own thing, you know? And, and so like, <laughs> I just remember, I didn't know anybody. So I have that going for me. You know, I'm trying to make friends, you know, it's fucking freezing. It's like 30 below. I wasn't used to that, you know, all this shit. And then I started like taking all that on. What did your girlfriend she break broke up, up with me? Oh. Yeah. And so like, and, and we had gone back and forth, like, you know, like, but anyways yeah she broke up with me and the, it was like i was in the shower and i'm just like thinking about all this shit and i'm just like then you start and my that, that, that song was playing <laughs> like in the uh in like so in the in the past way there but in the dorms you know there's that like i could hear it like somebody was like jamming on it like and so i was like kind of like like jamming on it and i'm like oh my god i was getting so sad and then i just thought, i was like you know what nobody's in here the door's locked like i'm gonna fucking cry i started crying <laughs> and it was just like the floodgates you know it was like the like snot and shit and like so oh you had my a god. you had a good cry like it was, like I how was, old are you right there? I was like, I think I know me. I was so embarrassed. Like I was done too. I was like, what was that? Were you disgusted with yourself? Like, I was just like, oh, <laughs> yeah, pussy. Like, what are you get doing? myself together. <laughs> like I punched myself in the head. You know. How old were you? I was, um, I was twenty one, maybe twenty two. That's so funny. Uh, now, like, did it feel? Did it feel good afterwards to fucking let fuck it out? Yeah, I was like, oh, I was, yeah, it felt good. But then the rest of the day, I was just like, Ugh. like I felt like gross about myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like I was just like, Ew. you know what was that? You I, know? I haven't cried like that since the same, almost exact same age, dude. Wh- what? High, yeah, dude. what happened? Yeah. High school sweetheart, same. St- you know, it's crazy. It's like crushed me. Chick that went to Cal Poly. Yeah, Emily Meyer. She listens out there. Yeah, she, you she, know what? The only girl that ever made me cry like that. Ashley Kirsten. Thanks a lot for that. I Andy. fucking I punched a hole in my door. I laid on my bed, played music in my ears all day long, and cried. My just yeah. cried, dude. Cried in my room. Fucking oh my god! Put headphones on, put it in my stereo system, listen to all the fucking sad <laughs> songs, and just fucking cried for like yeah, twelve you hours. Feed dude. it like once you get to that place, yeah. you start feeding yeah. that sadness. It was it, it like, was that. <sighs> it, you know, so I have a crazy story. Of this so uh, people always trip out that I'm I just re- picturing you guys crying right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's so pathetic. You know, I want to hug you guys right now. You know uh, that it, it's funny that you like said cowering. that right there, Justin, about how you like feed it. It's yeah. it was a weird thing for me that. I was so sad, so hurt, and felt so sorry for myself that I was finding ways to like, like punish myself more. Mm-hmm. That was when I started listening to country music. Uh, I started listening to country music as yeah, a punishment. They always talk about that. She stuff. liked country music. I hated country music. I started uh, listening to country music like to, almost like a, a punishment. Yeah, like a punishment. <laughs> and Torturing then I, yourself. And then I ended up liking it, and then I ended up listening uh, to a bunch it, of a oh bunch of. God, you you, like, so look at, you like look at a picture of her and just cry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's you know what it is. So we people don't talk about this. Like <clears throat> men, we, we we we're not typically not as expressive emotionally as women are. That's just a that's just a fact. It's a stereotype. It's a stereotype. It, it but holds. The, but there's some 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 science to support that. However, we're also like taught that showing emotions other than anger is unacceptable. It's embarrassing. Like nobody yeah. wants to. Think about it this way. For those of you listening right now who are like, no, it's okay if a guy cries. Bullshit. Imagine if you're in a restaurant. <laughs> you don't want to see that. And you see a woman kind of crying in her hands. And imagine how that makes you feel. It makes you feel sad, right? Mm-hmm. You feel sad. You want to talk to her. Now imagine if you see a grown man doing that, how uncomfortable oh, you feel seeing that. You think the world's like collapsing. Because society doesn't make it acceptable. So what happens is men is we bury it and we bury it and we bury it. And then when we finally give ourselves permission, it's like... <laughs> And it's just oh. all oh. oh god it's like vocal dude it's, it's like i had like redness in my face for a couple days dude yeah. i had a trainer that poor this dude was so nice i'm not gonna say his name great guy who rented space for me and he was going through a divorce around the same time uh that well before i did right so he was going through a divorce my marriage was on it was kind of coming to the end but i still was married and I remember him, he would come and talk to me about it. And I, you know, me and him would talk to each other because I was, I, I thought for sure mine was probably going to end. And he was telling me how, about how sad he was. But he was, 
he wasn't very expressive. He was typical guy. Like he's not going to show talking to another guy. He's not going to show any emotion. Yeah. So he's coming in and you know he's doing his thing and he's always smiling with his clients and but when they're gone you can tell something's bothering him. Mm-hmm. Well, one day, I guess his wife finally was like she sent him the papers like, and when you're going through a divorce, there's different. I experienced this too. There's different phases of like where you're facing reality. Like step one, move out of the house. That's a big shock. Step two, like we're not going to work this out. That's a big shock. And then the paper, when you actually get the paper and you sign it, that's a big shock. And then when you get the thing back from the county that says you are divorced, those are all different levels. So she sent him the paperwork to sign. Like she's serious, like 100%. Now there's no doubt because I think in his mind he was thinking maybe we can, I don't know. So anyway, he comes in and he's talking to his client and he's late. He's like 10 minutes late. And I hear him talking to her because it was a small facility. And he's saying like, oh, you know, I got the paperwork today. I got, you know, I signed it and looks like it's a, it's a done deal. And she's like, oh, you know, and you know, women very empathetic. And she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. She's like, and she gives him a hug. And so she's hugging him and he kind of tries to break away for a second, but she holds him. If he broke away, he would have like, he would have been okay. She would have made it out alive. She She goodwill hunting his ass, dude. Dude, Goodwill hunting his ass. So he's in, he's in front, he's in the, he's in the front of the gym. That's your fault. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) So she's in the front of the gym with him and she kind of hugged him and you can see he kind of lets go with his arms. And so now his arms are at his sides, but she's holding him still and she starts rubbing his back and she's like, it's okay. Like, it's okay. It's okay. And then all of a sudden he starts crying a little bit. And then she starts like squeezing him and then he loses his shit. And it is, I hate, it is very unnerving to hear a no. grown man ball. You know what I yeah. tell Like he was like, Bruh! and yeah. for like five minutes, loud screaming, crying, and, and the whole gym was like, what do we do? Yeah. And I remember thinking to myself, you're just like, doing a curl in the corner. Like, oh. <laughs> no, dude, I remember this feeling, is interesting. I remember thinking like, this is. Wow, this feels weird. You know, I dealt you with I dealt with a few guys that actually cried in sessions that I trained them before, and every time, you know, it had to deal with uh, stress, work, and sex life with their with their wife, their partner. Mm. Mm. I, it was it was something that you know, I didn't have hundreds of people that I dealt with like this, but there was definitely a handful of guys that were forties, fifties, and it, it it was when I first started to realize how common it was. Uh, for that to uh, actually drive people apart in like a marriage where, uh, you know, guy's driven his whole life, goes to school, gets his degree, gets a really good job, works 12 hours Finds a day. Finds that girl that provi- he's been, had his eye on all right, the time. Right, provides yeah. the house, they have the kids, the family and everything like that, and then it's like never has sex. Like six months go by and yeah. they never have sex, and it's like, and they have no drive for it, and there's no connect, yeah, inside. and they don't know, and they don't know how to get it back. Like that, that yeah. would happen a lot, dude. Mm-hmm. I had that happen more often than I didn't realize how how common that was. You feel helpless, yeah, right. With 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 men extras, and I and I remember helping them connect that to diet and exercise and training and how much that all help. And man, I've seen some dudes break down over that. Yeah, see, yeah. I I don't have a I don't. For me personally, I'm pretty aware of it. I'm not. I don't have an issue. Like I'll, I'll definitely tear up uh, for good things. Mm-hmm. I don't really. I've never. I haven't really bawled in a long. Fuck, dude. I'm tearing up like crazy I, these days. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You had, you had yeah, yeah. I'm all no est- I'm all estrogen right oh, now. Oh man. Too. Oh, I watch a commercial. I'll go, I bet. Whoa. <laughs> I was, I was watching some the other night all by myself, and Katrina had fallen asleep, and. I caught my, what movie was it? Fuck, I can't remember what movie it was. It's a movie I've seen like a hundred times though, you know? A yeah. good movie He's though. all commando. Yeah, no. <laughs> it definitely wasn't like a wonder. It wasn't like something fucking super like sad like that, but it was definitely an emotional movie and I was by myself at night and I'm all sucked into it. I had my headphones on actually. I was listening oh, to it and I wouldn't shit. keep her awake. Yeah. And, uh, <sighs> whoa, fuck dude, yeah. where's that coming from? My kids will do that to me. If my kids do anything at all, it doesn't even have to be anything great. It could be anything. My daughter the other day, we gave her, we at the dollar store, they said they sell like Christmas cards, like generic Christmas cards. So we bought a box and my daughter's like, oh, can I write some cards? I'm like, yeah, sure. No problem. So she puts in the card like, Merry Christmas, Papa. I love you. And like makes a little envelope and then hands it to me. And I'm like, oh, you made me a card? You know, I'm like, I'm going to lose my shit, you know, over that. I saw, I saw my dad cry once. And it was just oh, seeing your dad cries tough, man. Bro, oh, yeah. it was difficult because my, my dad's a bit of a crier. My, though. my dad is never only <laughs> one like your dad, your only one big, time. He's a big softie. Yeah, I only saw my dad cry one time, and it was my sister was in the hospital. She had some health stuff going on, and she was a kid, 
and she had the oxygen tube, you know, and everything. And she's laying in bed and we were all there and my dad like rushed from work and he walked in the room and I saw the look on his face and I saw he started to tear up and he just turned around and walked out. That's all I saw of him crying. But I knew my dad was crying. Mm. That was weird yeah, as a yeah. kid to see that. It yeah. felt so strange to see my oh, dad. Oh, man. That'll yeah. make you cry right away. Seeing, a da- seeing your dad cry will make a, make a kid cry. I don't even know why you're crying, dad. I'm crying oh, with yeah. you. Yeah, right. Yeah. What are we doing I, I, I remember, right I remember times with my dad crying, and I remember just like start crying with him. Like, what are we crying about? Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> like the right, most right, times I've right, cried is just... because somebody's crying like on <laughs> right, me. Yeah, your dad's I'm crying. Like, oh, crying. God. It's, it's Halfway into the cry, no, I, have no, I have no idea why we're crying. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You just wait till you. I think that's funny, though. Isn't that crazy how that how that you can be impacted like that? Literally. Oh, I take on that. Being a every young, time. young like boy, young boy, seeing your father cry yeah. could make you cry without even knowing why he's crying. No. Because it's because it never happens. Isn't that a trip? Yeah. 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 Isn't that yeah, a trip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It never happens. Like, you don't cry that much at all, but that's such a powerful moment for you to see that, that it makes it's you cry. because of what they represent. They're just this stoic sort of figure in your mind, you know, that, like, has everything together. And if they're, like, not together, it's like, oh, no, the world's not together. <laughs> yeah. What's I think, happening? I think you're right. I think yeah. that's what it is. It's oh, like, all of a sudden, this, the sky is falling. Fear, no, right? my, that's I, what I there was one, one going through my divorce. I remember my kids, you know, I, was, I would talk to them about it and whatever. And, you know, kids are funny the way they process things. So they wouldn't want to talk about it at some point, and then they'd you know bring it up randomly or whatever. And I was sitting with my kids, and we're watching a movie together. And you know, my son looks at me, he goes, "You're a really good dad." You know that? And I was like, "Oh, that would make oh, me cry." Man. Oh my god, that would like, make me cry. Especially out of nowhere like that. Yeah, you're a really you. good dad. You yeah. know, and I'm like, oh. and it, if it wasn't followed up with it, Dad, I want a new Xbox yeah. or anything like that. Like that would yeah. be like, oh, he didn't have to. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> Next day, brand new Xbox. <laughs> I'm dead. Yeah. I am a good dad. Yeah. Here's some shit. Here's I some know. cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I've had moments like totally. my kid. I'll come home like we've been on a trip or something. Like I missed you so much. Like I, you know, I kept thinking, "Where's dad?" And it was like, ah, "I'm gonna oh. go in the bathroom." Oh, so <laughs> so funny. It's so funny. <laughs> anyway, dude, uh, we need to. I can't wait for us to get our shipment of the gold. I want, can't wait for you guys to try the gold juice. Oh, uh, from Organifi. Cannot wait. You I guys know, we, you, we put that, Shauna, you told Shauna was going to order yeah, it. Yeah, send it to us, it. right? So it's got- uh, it's, Did you already plow through that bottle? Dude, I'm using it every day. First off, <clears throat> it tastes really good. Remind me again, what, what is inside of it again? It's reishi, so, turmeric, it's all it's like anti-inflammatory. Well, doesn't, doesn't, the, doesn't red have reishi in it too? No, red is rhodiola. No, green has oh. reishi in it. No, no green, green has, has ashwagandha. 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 Yeah, ashwagandha. Yeah, ashwagandha's in green- <laughs> Don't uh, listen to it. I yeah. thought reishi was in red too. No, 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 oh. no. Oh, it's got beets. It's got beet. It's uh, got beets, and it has uh, it, the red juice has all that, right? Yeah. No, the gold juice is like turmeric. It's reishi. It's uh, let me think. There's lots of phytonutrients in there. Suppose it's it's very. Uh, it, I can see what they were trying to do with the formulation. They were trying to create uh, like ginger. Lemon balm, uh, turkey tail, uh, which is a, a type of uh, mushroom. Um, they're trying to create a like nighttime uh, product that's going to be relaxing and oh, parasympathetic. Uh-huh. You know, parasympathetic. I like so that. yeah, so um, so I've tried it at night in warm coconut milk, which is really good because it's got this caramelly flavor to it oh really Mm -hmm. so i'll drink it at night and uh you you do notice you kind of feel cool and calm like calm afterwards Mm -hmm. and i'll also i've also combined it with if i'm going to have a very strong dose of stimulants this is just something i've learned myself something that i've done in the past is all combined a strong stimulant with something that's more relaxing and it'll give me an even energy instead of getting kind that's of like edgy. The, that's the same theory of using mm-hmm. like theanine with yes, caffeine. Yes, right? yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. So I can't wait till we get it so you guys can try it because I think it's their, I'm going to say, I think it's one of their better, one of their best products. I think they hit it out of the park. Well, I, I use the awesome. green, I'm using the she, green Shauna right says now. that they're like selling like crazy. Like oh, are right? they? Yeah. Uh, yeah, a, I'm a huge fan of the green juice. Yeah, I'm that's, using that's it twice a helpful. day right now, just because of the ashwagandha, and then I just I just add a pill on top of it too. Oh, for the to get your testosterone. Yeah, because you want me to go three three times a day is just fucking hard, man. <laughs> no, it's not. Yes, it is, dude. To you, make to make a shit. Yeah, to, you make it sound like I said like, all right, Adam, what I want you to do? I want you to I want you to climb the tallest <laughs> mountain every day. You're taking a pill. 
Yeah. I'm keeping no. There's powder. It's powder and pills. oh my bad. And, dro- and a dropper. <laughs> you got me. With, you got me with a dropper. You got me with a pill, and then you got me with a powder. Yeah, I'm having you take uh, cordyceps. So I'm like mixing it all right and now. ashwagandha, and I think tribulus. I had you take to try and support your body's natural testosterone backup. But you're you're doing okay, man. You're hanging in there, dude. I'm hanging in there. It's rough, but I'm hanging in there right now. Yeah. For right now, and I, we had a ton of people that were asking in the protocol, and I will give everyone the protocol when I when I put together like the consistency of a solid protocol. Because what I'm not yeah, you don't want to advocate something's not working. Not exactly, and I'm not going to bullshit people on stuff. Here's the deal: like we, and I say this on the show all the time. All these fucking supplements, all these things that I'm taking that are natural tests. If I'm not doing the big stuff, like sleeping really good, taking care of stress in my life fucking training like nothing's gonna increase my my testosterone more than those things. nothing yep. so yeah good point so I'm, I'm not gonna bullshit you that right now that's a that's a big focus for me right now like the hardest thing that i'm i'm having like just wanting to lift and be consistent mm-hmm. and, I, you, and i know it's the best thing for me isn't that crazy you know it's the best thing but because you have low testosterone oh. right now you don't know you don't want to not it's, as motivating it's a motherfucker yeah. well you probably don't imagine you don't get a pump probably oh. it's hard to get a pump you don't feel connection to your muscles like you did before fatigued fast i'm weak as fuck yeah, my body's not responding, so I'm 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 not responding. Like normally, you're just trying to slow the decline. Yeah, it's it, it is. It's I mean, it's it's definitely. Uh, Are you doing anything diet wise? Like, have you bumped yeah, like up your, some your cholesterol? Your, yeah, have you done, bumped yeah. up your fat and cholesterol? Yeah, and my fats and cholesterol are pretty high. I typically run. I, I mean, I stay on a. Ever since we ran keto and did that, I've my pro macro profile is forever a moderate protein intake, a high fat, and then you know intermittently I have these carbohydrates, which I again I'll admit right now with the holiday days of traveling everything yeah. like that that's why too i haven't you know p- told people a protocol right now i'm just trying to be consistent about everything mm-hmm. that i'm taking everything that i'm doing and then i'll be able to report back and say coconut so. oil bro throw coconut because it's got those saturated fats that have been shown to boost so we've got doug just got the coconut oil from yeah, thrive market thrive market so just start putting that on fucking everything man <laughs> throw in your just, coffee just coconut coconut oil everything rub, i'm drinking rub, coconut right now that rub, shit on everything throw, throw, it, right throw on a your tablespoon balls. in my baa or whatever the hell you call it is this ba ba how do you say this ba is that is it is it thai bae, bae, bae. is it thai language it almost sounds vietnamese but i don't know baya no, baya no, no. Sa- saudi cup tastes hell good isn't that what they say in thailand Sa- saudi cup what does that mean you're welcome uh, uh hello sour, i think sour d how, cup it, okay so see that's what i used to say mm-hmm. i would say sour d cup and my girlfriend said you I was to say it faster though. She said I was making Sorry, she, was, she was yeah, she said that was wrong. Ah, I see. Yeah, that's when I was in Thailand. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't know why they don't like me. <laughs> that's why they put the that's just, why they give me food poison. Battle axe their their language. Exactly. So give me the bird. Bring on the estrogen bird. This quaz brought to you by Organify. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory-tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk-free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. Our first question is from Gemma Sedgmund. You guys talk a lot about the importance of weight training, and although I completely agree, as a triathlete, it's very difficult to fit it all in. What sort of strength training would you recommend for someone who can feasibly only manage two sessions a week? We've talked about this. Yeah. For- we, we've talked about this with when you're an athlete, your sport comes first. Yeah. hundred percent. That's like your that, priority. That is your priority, and it should not, your, your weight training should not cut into that it should complement that no i i experienced this personally when i did jujitsu years ago i remember i would train three to four days a week which is a lot of jujitsu because the jujitsu class was two and a half hours the last hour of that class or so is all sparring it's very strenuous on the body Mm -hmm. and on top of that so i do jujitsu three or four days a week then i would lift three or four days a week so some days I do jiu-jitsu and lift because I thought I got to get all my lifting in. And yeah. the only thing that I succeeded in doing was fucking overtraining my body right. and I sucked at jiu-jitsu. I didn't get performance benefits from jiu-jitsu and weight training until I cut my weight training down to once or twice a week. Yep. So then I'd go to, you know, I'd do my jiu-jitsu four days a week and I'd lift weights once, maybe twice a week at the most. So if you're a triathlete, <clears throat> first off, if you can only manage two sessions a week, that sounds to me like you're just sque- you're trying to squeeze in as much as you possibly you might can. Be overdoing it. Yeah. You might even be overdoing it. Yeah. Once once. A, once a week would be plenty. When I'm yeah. playing ball, it's once to two times a week. 
Mm-hmm. When it's like when I was, and I'm just like a, I'm just like a fucking Breck League guy. I'm not even like a trying to be pro or fucking be consider myself a triathlete. Like you consider your, if you consider yourself a triathlete, I know the the, the training that's required to well, excel at your sport. Yeah. It again, the weight training should complement. It shouldn't be something like, oh, it's like I got to force. I do, it however, feel like, and I know some sports are pretty much year round. You know, and people just like keep this this habit up of like you know training consistently like five six days a week like doing their sport like crazy whereas you know i i feel it's it's nothing but beneficial to go through a few months of just you know strength training and like going through an actual off season and designating a time period where you're not competing as much or you're you're barely competing if mm-hmm. that and you're really focusing and honing in on building the body back up you know focusing on just delivering that strength signal to its maximal capacity and then you know timing it out so now we're going to ramp back up and then get it it's give and take totally. it's, it's give and take no matter how we how we drum yeah. it up or look at it any sport is not ideal for the body nope. and is, and you just have to understand that and be okay with that. And for every bit that you scale back and you introduce weight training, your body's going to thank you and you're going to benefit. Your sport mm-hmm. may suffer from it a little bit. If you start to scale back on the, the amount of training, the amount of months, like Justin's saying that you're doing, and you're going to start implementing an off season training program. Well, guess what? Your body is going to benefit for sure from that. You may not, it may not translate into yeah. making you a better athlete necessarily. It could, yeah. If done correctly, yeah, because the tri- triathlons are insane. You yeah. have three separate skills. Yes, you need to be have endurance and strength and whatever, but it's three very different skills. Yeah, running, swimming, and biking, and, and it's it, a lot of all three. It, it's a lot of all three. It's just always just like hammering your body from all kinds of different directions, and and all three of those. Re- there's a lot of technique that's involved with all of them. Cycling, oh yeah, cycling by itself, you could train all the time as a cyclist, and you could do it for years and still find ways to improve. The same is true for running, and especially for swimming. And so, if you're an actual competitive triathlete, you're probably training a lot mm-hmm. uh, throughout the week. You're probably doing. I don't know, a couple hours a day almost of, uh, skills. of something because you're either swimming a lot or you're running a lot or you're biking a lot. It's just mm-hmm. a lot of stuff. So you want to throw resistance training on, on top of that. Well, uh, maybe once a week. And I don't think the goal of your resistance training should be, especially if you're in season, if you're competing, the goal isn't to get stronger because no. good luck pushing your body with weights while you're doing all that. You're going to actually set yourself up for failure. What I would do is in season the resistance training is completely mobility based uh, based excuse me I and I was just going to say trying to make your joints bulletproof like like really reinforcing the integrity of your joints because mm-hmm. that's what's keeping you intact and I that's would right. take I would take a foundational day from performance and a mobility day from performance and those would be my my goal for two days That's right this there is a go. client of mine I would say Take one day from performance and take one one day from performance, the mobility session, and those should be your target today. So one day you're really doing a lot of strength type, you know, multi-planar type movements, full body, and then the other day you're doing all flexibility, dynamic movements. And when you're off season, when you're out of season, when you're not competing, first off, you should be training less anyway. So if you're if you're an athlete, if you're a triathlete, a triathlete and you compete and you're in competition season and then you've done your competition... If you're not scaling back on your training afterwards, you're you're setting yourself up for failure straight up. Like mm-hmm. you're an idiot. Mm-hmm. You need to have an off season and an on season. When you're off season, you're training much much less. You're doing much less volume of training. That's when I would put a little bit more emphasis on resistance training because you have the time to do it. You have the recovery ability now to do it and because it's the right time to try and build a little bit of strength. Again, you're not going crazy because you're still doing your other, you know, biking, swimming, and running, but uh, that is the time when you start to add strength. When you're in season, getting ready for your competition, it is. It should be mobility, it's more for movement, preservation. Based. That's yeah. it, 100. percent If you try to combine the two, you push weights and you push training for triathlons. Uh, you're asking for trouble. All right, our next question is from Dylan Austin. Someone told me that adaptation isn't as important as progressive overload. He essentially called it bro science and claimed that you could stay low rep as long as you're adding weight and get all the results you desire. True or false? Yeah. So he, I like this question. Yeah, but he was obviously talking to a Doug. Bro. You got to? Did you have to take off right now? Yeah, I got to step out for a little bit. All right, we'll, we'll read the next two yeah, questions. Yeah, we're there. I like this question. <sighs> I like this question a lot. 
I like the fact that whoever the knucklehead is that you that told you this that claimed that adaptation is bro science is a knucklehead yeah, for that. How, how do they even There's, adaptation isn't important as progressive overload? Yeah, what? No, Those no. are two different things. If anything, <laughs> if anything, it's the other way around, anyways. <laughs> so wrong, but where he's right, you could you could stay in that and all and just consistently just put weight on and put weight on and weight on, and you could ab- absolutely progress your body. Absolutely could. You could do a lot of guys do that in strength. A lot of your strength training uh, athletes never ever leave five repetitions, right? And 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 they continually just add weight, add weight, add weight. But I mean, we've done enough. There's de- enough studies now to show that there's a better way. Yeah, and there's a mo- there's a much better way and now. Strength athletes periodize. They still yep. they still phase. They it's not like they may not go to supersets and high reps. But they do. They pe- manipulate percentage. Yeah. They manipulate so they're p- acute yeah. variables. Seventy-five they're percent, that. seventy-five, eighty. They're they're, re- they're re- rarely ever working over eighty percent. Yeah, if you're always focused on progressive overload and it just, you know, always think about ramping up the entire time, you are going to eventually hurt yourself. Oh, and develop some really bad uh, recruitment patterns. You see this with lifters who just focus on squats, deadlifts, and bench press. And their weights go up, and you can see their mechanics. You can see, and you can call them out. You can literally say, "Yeah, you're probably this person's probably going to get hurt at some point," and they do. Um, as far as getting results is concerned, if you're in powerlifting, then definitely follow powerlifting programming. Okay, if you're specifically an athlete for powerlifting, right. if your goal is to build muscle and build strength overall, you're going to do better in the long term by changing rep ranges and changing all the variables. And getting your body, because your body will, okay, your body always adapts fastest when the stimulus is new. This is just a fact. Anytime you change something, you're, you're going to notice a quick change in your body. If you stay in something for a long time, you will notice your body will start progressing. If it was as easy as adding weight to the bar, then you it would be easy. Everybody oh, would I'd have, be Hercules by now. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking every, for 20 years of lifting, if I just added five pounds every fucking two months. I'd be Your bench press yeah. would be at 5,000 pounds. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't work that way. Well, no. there's, I mean, there's the skill factor of like you get really good at a skill when you do it consistently and frequently. And so, you know, that's definitely the appeal on that end of it is like these very specific lifts, I'm going to get, I'm going to hone in on the mechanics. I'm going to get really good at this. But, you know, like they could do a lot better if they intermittently step out of that protocol and they go into another adaptation 100 percent, the meatball that said this has to <laughs> has to be <laughs> you get them has to be a fucking power lifter and only a power lifter which yeah, is like fine that's dude. all they do yeah and that's all you do then that's whatever but i'll tell you what i'll take the fucking pepsi challenge all day on somebody who lifts like that versus somebody who that's follows old reference bro but, is it that old yeah, yeah, we have a lot, of, it, yeah. a lot of most people get it though right yeah, you guys yeah, get it don't yeah. you, you no know, i just you, you know because cur- i've been on a roll lately and i just want to acknowledge been, that you, know, on, you guys are capable of it too yeah but we're not on a 20 year old's podcast <laughs> right now we're on our podcast Son of a bitch, 35 yeah. year olds are listening right, so they right. get it right so Fair enough but i mean if you if you take two people heads up you know but just starting and you say okay for the next three months you're going to or even three to six months however long you want to stretch it out you're going to run a maps protocol and then this person's going to purely just train for strength or a powerlifting meet at the end of those six months maybe the guy on that's been training for the powerlifting meet might edge out the guy strength wise but as, th- as far as changing the way you look and your overall strength your overall muscle your overall body fat loss the person who run that actually periodizes and underlates their programming right. will fucking smash and that there point. is there is specific programming programming yeah. for powerlifting right. or weightlifting and there Sports are there, specific but, but again they periodize I, I don't know any powerlifters who are successful yeah. who just constantly progressively overload yeah the, the person who answered this is like a, a meatball guy who follows like powerlifting protocol yeah. and they and he doesn't even really probably understand yeah. how it okay, works okay so here's what i see when i see people who talk like this do you know how they progressively overload because i've known a lot of people like this who are like oh pff, periodize i just keep adding weight to the bar and i just keep pushing it do you know what they keep pushing the amount of steroids that they take. That's what I, that's what I see. I see mm, guys who boom their Good body. Point. No, sh- no, it's no joke. Like yeah, guys who their body will plateau. Right. And instead of changing their programming, CC, keep they, it real. That's it. They yeah. just add more but gear. Guess what? That'll work. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that works. That works too. That, that is another uh, <laughs> plan. Know. Right. You know. Yeah. No. Um. I. I t- I'll tell you what. Your best bet, uh, for long term success is to. Phase your workouts. It is all about adaptation. I don't know why this person says adaptation isn't important. That's that's exactly what you want. 
getting stronger, building, those are all adaptations. Well, explain what adaptation is because obviously this person doesn't fully understand what it, what it or whoever is Adaptation explained. is just your body responding to a signal that you, that you send it. So Which it is, adapts. Right, yeah, yeah. Getting, it gets better at whatever that is, right? It, it can get worse no, too. Explain it can, to me how that's yeah, gross Yeah, it can adapt the other way. Right? Yeah, it can adapt downwards <laughs> too. So if I stop working out, my body adapts to not working out by reducing its muscle mass, no longer needs it, yeah. becomes more efficient with its calories as a result and all that stuff. So- no, adaptation is what it's all about. Well, progressive overload is technically adaptation too. No, progressive overload means yeah, right. yeah. well <laughs> because you're if you're progressively overloading, your body's having to adapt, adapt to the new, new stimulus, the new amount of new volume. load. That, yes, yeah, exactly. that's why I'm saying that's a, on, it's dude. weird that they it's put it in that. stupidly. Yeah, yeah, free Which question should be a flag right away that whoever's <laughs> giving the information. What's is, the next one? Next question. Who's going to read that? You want me to read that? I can't read. So Daniel Danielle CF two thousand. What's your opinion on physical therapists instructing clients to take some time off completely from the gym? Do you think less severe injuries such as shin splints should be rehabbed while continuing to work out in the gym or should there be weeks of complete rest? This is a good question too hmm. because this is Listen something to your body. You do get you do get some PTs, you do get some doctors that give this recommendation of staying out of the gym completely. Now you got to remember that when these guys and girls give these recommendations, that it's it's solely based off of Safety liability, nets liability yes. right? I If I'm a PT or I'm a doctor and I have somebody who comes in with whatever injury or condition that they have, that I'm concerned that they're right, they could hurt themselves more. Right. You're they're just going, assuming people don't have common sense. Right. So they're going to lean on, you know, taking it safe. Like, because in their, the way they're looking at it is like, I care less if this person puts on five or 10 pounds of fat while they're off the gym for a month. I care more about them not injuring themselves more than they've already injured themselves. And so that's where this recommendation comes because, no, it would be ideal to be in the gym and moving. Now, what you're doing in the gym. That's everything. It is everything. That's it, because because there are two sides of this. So I'll, I'm going to play devil's advocate with the physical therapist. I had one who worked with me who was exceptional, best physical therapist I'd ever seen. And sometimes- Until Dr. Brink. Yeah, physical therapist. Well, so he's a movement, movement specialist. specialist. Yeah, he's on another level. Yeah, as you yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's on a complete another level. Sometimes, dep- first off, it depends on the injury. If it's an acute injury, you de- you have to take time off. You bust your knee- you can't. You probably shouldn't move it if it's inflamed and you hurt it really bad. But let's say you have chronic shoulder pain um, and you're doing rehab exercises and you go to the gym and you work with a trainer who doesn't understand what to do with your shoulder. That's a problem. The other thing too is sometimes you need to stop working out so that you can change the recruitment pattern before you go back into working out. So if I have a poor recruitment pattern that's causing my hip pain, and my therapist or my movement specialist says, hey, listen, stop squatting for a little while. We're just going to focus on changing your recruitment pattern. Then I'll have you start squatting again. That makes sense because if I'm going to keep hammering my body with heavy squats while doing exercises and movements to change my recruitment patterning, it can be very difficult because the heavy squats might override the correctional movement because it's a louder signal. Just like sometimes I would tell someone to stop running so we can correct issues with their ankles and feet and then have them slowly start running again with new patterning. So I can see the uh, the rationale behind that. Now, studies will show that movement actually with many injuries, many types of injuries- Will facilitate recovery. It makes you recover yeah. faster. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's logical it sense. It does make logical more, sense. More blood flow, more oxygen, more nutrients. That's what the fucking muscle needs or yeah. whatever your, what's, the injury needs to get, recover faster. It's yeah, what plus you, just telling your, your mind and your central nervous system and everything else that this is a priority. Like we need to maintain and sustain this movement. So let's, you know, protect and, and, and create this, this pattern and, and reestablish this pattern. Now, the mistake that a lot of people make is the same one that I made which was I remember firing my PT because I thought it was crap what they were giving me and I could do this myself better and why am I paying for this? So I I rehabbed myself and then what I did was I was so excited about my progress that I started pushing it. You know, I have ACL, MCL surgery, you know, less than three months I'm doing single leg box jumps. 
Like I have no business. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like no business doing that right away. Just but ramped it up. Right. You know. But that was the the young full of piss and vinegar of me that like yeah. is you know trying to prove a point that ah oh, I could, so resilient. Yeah, I uh, could do this yeah. better. I'll be back faster than you know. And then I re-injured myself. It set me back like six months. So. I think the the reason why they tell most people to take that complete time off is the fear of you not knowing how much to push and making sure that you're doing the right thing. So they're always in a boat on the safety side. But if you know what you're doing or you have somebody who's guiding you in the right direction, then absolutely being in there and and working towards that or working through that in the gym i think is is important but yeah but especially if you're doing i mean here's the thing too rehab exercises are exercise right i used to get clients all the time that would come to me and yeah. they'd have an injury and we would work out in the gym but it would be rehab based right. so i mean and, and again there's a lot of i hate to say it, bad trainers Just, out there where imagine this imagine if you had your client you're helping them with the fact that they have a bad shoulder they have back mm-hmm. pain and then they have another trainer they go train with. You're going to be a lot of, you know, I guarantee you we would kind of lean towards going, okay, you probably shouldn't work out with the other trainer because I don't know what they're going to do with you. Right, right. I don't know if they understand this injury or whatever. Right. Well, psychologically, like it, like rehabbing, like exercises don't feel like they carry a lot of weight for a lot of people. Like they're like, ah, oh, well, this is just what I have to do to get back to like actually doing something awesome. You right. Know? And it's like you have to, you have to like really check yourself on that and, understand that the right dose is everything and so right now this is the right dose and this is what's getting you to adapt and get back and even stronger if you do it right you know where i see a lot of mistakes in rehab and this is also again why I, I let go of my pt was i was in this facility where there was i think i think there was six or eight of us going at the same time right and there was a head pt and they had one or two assistants underneath them and all of us were rehabbing different injuries. You got a hip over here to the left. You got the ACL, MCL, me over here. You got someone with a shoulder condition over here. And what this what this clinic does is they come over. They take a guy like me, and I'm over here doing ball squats. You know, here's a ball. Put it against here. Do ball squats. Time, they put a timer next to me. Do this for two minutes. Go to the next guy. Go to the next guy. Tell him what to do. And so we're all, not even critiquing. No for mechanics. And, and so yeah. what I know right away. That's our medical system, dude. I, it I promotes get, that. Well, Sucks. this is fucking crazy to me, right? So this and this is a fucking huge issue right here. So I'm doing these ball squats. Of course, I just tore my ACL, MCL on my left side. So what do you fucking think happens when I do a ball squat? My body shifts to the side that's dominant and doesn't feel hurt. Right. And so my squat. You're compensating immediately. Right. Now, I'm aware of that. So I'm like shaking. You're like, not the average person. Right. I'm shaking like a leaf. But the I'm average to, person doesn't have No, the average person is just going up and down, up and down, up and down. And they're letting their body take the path that's easiest for them, right? Which yeah. your body is going to take the stronger, non-injured side and overcompensate. And then now you've created poor recruitment patterns. And now you've got a fucking imbalance right. that ends up causing pain later on. That was what made me walk out from the facility. I'm like, oh, this is ridiculous. This is yeah. why it's, I, it's unfortunate. This is why the doctor clients that I had when I was a trainer used to send me all their patients. They would actually send them to me over physical therapy mm-hmm. because so you give one on one attention. Well, and I'm not bound. And, I'm and not you bound by biomechanics. In, I'm not bound by insurance. I'm not bound by any of that stuff. I can spend lots of time with them. I can progressively overload them. Yeah, and they just got better. They just had better success as a result. No. Yeah. All right. So the next question is from Joe Buns. Hey, Joe Buns. You got some buns. How do you guys balance science with anecdote? While studies can have useful information if they aren't practical in real world situations, anecdote would seem to trump studies. Th- let me tell you why I like this particular question. So, and bear with me. I do like this question too. Uh, the the in the past, the anecdote is not evidence. Uh, uh, so an anecdote would be, you know, my great grandfather chain, know, chain you... smoked since he was the age of thirteen every day. Smoked a cigarette every single day, and would chain smoke literally light one cigarette to the other one, and then pass it in his mouth. Damn, that's that's gangster. And he lived till he was. You won't even wait. Old world. You won't even wait to wait for the other cigarette to go out, bro. He, everybody, this <laughs> was, got to keep it going. Yeah, bro, keep he would it going. he would smoke while eating dinner. He was just always smoking. Damn. And his cigarette, you know, he set he set his bed, his sheets on fire a couple times because he'd fall asleep with a. With a <laughs> he lived till he was. 92 years old yeah. so anecdotally cigarettes fucking you know they're great for longevity yeah. but it's not evidence obviously we know that cigarettes are bad for you so we've always said anecdote is not evidence however yeah you say something you've said it before i don't know if you're gonna right you've and i think it's 
awesome is that antidote is normally what propels us to actually do the research. Anecdote and drives research. Right. Yeah. It drives research. And what's cool about- we, If we didn't have antidote first, we wouldn't have research. Well, There's no reason to research something if yeah. people aren't coming out saying, hey, this is fucking me up. I right. tried this and whoa, it did this to right. me. It's That's, like, why? Yeah. That's right. And what's cool about today is in the past, <laughs> when anecdote would drive research, the anecdote would have to get so big and so loud- that finally scientists would hear about it and try it. And, th and by the time it got to this point- Happens a lot faster now with the internet. So way awesome. faster. Yeah. Because now I can go online and I can, you know, if I have rheumatoid arthritis in the past, like where am I going to meet, you know, a hundred or 500,000 people with rheumatoid arthritis right. and to hear their anecdote? I couldn't. I couldn't do it before. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, maybe going to a convention or something, but they didn't exist. Like, what would I do? Yeah. Today, I can go on the internet and if I have rheumatoid arthritis, there's forums that I can mm -hmm. join- and I can read anecdote from tens of thousands of people with rheumatoid arthritis. And it's going to drive me to reading about and researching things that I may not normally have heard of. So I have personal experience with this. I have my, my godson, who's also my cousin. He has Crohn's disease. I've talked about him before. And his mom, my aunt, is a registered dietitian. Very smart lady. Uh, great mother. Hard worker. So... But unfortunately, her Western medicine education with diet, you know, being a dietitian provided zero answers for Crohn's disease. In fact, the, the Western medicine model of treating Crohn's disease is anti, you know, uh, you know steroids uh, and or, you know, medications that are like chemotherapy to suppress the immune system. Yeah. And that's it. There's really nothing if else. If you don't understand it, let's just kill it. There's really nothing else, right? Yeah. But, you know, we have the internet. She goes online and she joins these forums and she starts reading anecdote from all these other people with Crohn's disease. And she reads and sees that all these people are talking about something called the carbohydrate specific diet. And this is a diet that similar to paleo, very similar to paleo, where they avoid all grains and they do a few other things. And I'm not super uh, informed on the details, but she learned about it from the forum. Now there was no research supporting it. There was almost no research, maybe some animal research, or you could stretch out a little bit and but there was not. So it's all anecdote. But because she's on this forum and she sees thousands of people talking about it, she's like, let's give this a shot. She, my, my cousin went into full remission by doing this carbohydrate specific diet. Right. And today, you know, five years later, there's now super, you know, like, like big time research going into these type of diets for Crohn's disease. So because of the internet, I, what I love about the internet is it makes you could you could be a part of a very small minority group, but when you go on the online, yeah. all of it like if you're a furry, you're a fucking like nobody's uh, a furry, yeah. right? Yeah. But there's there are online forums with five hundred thousand people who are furries because worldwide, <laughs> just furry feeds. Yeah, worldwide, yeah. there's a, there's enough of you guys to join yeah. online. We're right. gonna meet up, so you could go you online and stuff. you could start to read anecdote. This is why this is why full body workouts and increasing the frequency of your training is now the fucking thing. When, when Mind Pump first came out, we were talking about full body workouts. MAPS programs are designed around them, and we got laughed at. It was all about body part splits. Everybody said, oh, that's that's for beginners. That's old school. It's not as effective. Now you got Jim Stepani talking about full body workouts are superior. Bodybuilding.com is the one you know promoting it. Why? Because online on the fitness forums people are talking about it and they're like look i don't know what you these can't deny it anymore right. i don't know what these bodybuilders are talking about you know body part splits i'm doing a full body workout and i gain five pounds of muscle and i gain eight pounds of muscle next thing you know it's like what everybody's talking about online and enough anecdote is evidence in my opinion and it's driving science so how do we how do we balance the two of them for me the way i balance is any every any and every study i always take with a grain of salt Mm -hmm. Every st it's like to me, I look at it like a, a great compass or a great place well, to who start. put it out for one, right? Yeah. So because th you have to know that that's true. And and most studies are short term, you know. So mm -hmm. there is always going to be, and there's always exceptions to the rule. Very, what, I think the uh, number of studies that are duplicated are like thirty something percent. Mm. So it's, it's rare. Yeah, so most of them can't even be replicated. Right, replicated. most can't even yeah. be replicated exactly <laughs> yeah. the same. So yeah, no. <laughs> I, I think studies give us a nice. Uh, a nice kind of um, direction, yeah, direction to be looking at something. But I actually, I think antidote for an antidote actually at that point is weighs as heavy, if not more heavy than when there's enough of it. You start yeah. comparing the two, yeah, that's yeah. how I make decisions. Yeah, when you get enough of it, like another good example, I love this one was uh, when I when my kids when my son was first born, I asked the doctor he had a cough, and I told the doctor, hey, um, 
honey. Should I give him some honey? You know, he was like one or two for his cough. And uh, I thought I'm, I'm, I told her I said you know I know it's a it's a it's an old wives' tale but should I give him honey? And she goes no. They've <laughs> actually found in studies now that honey contains a compound mm-hmm. that su- that acts on the part of the brain that causes you to cough, so it suppresses the cough, and so it definitely works. Now, which has been passed on for you know generations. It's all anecdote because yeah, ten years anecdote. ten years before that the doctor would they would laughed at you. No, honey, pff, that's an old wives' tale. Mm. But there's some evidence now. Now there's evidence su- suggesting it. And so I, I don't have any problem with anecdote. Now, when I have an issue with anecdote is when anecdote is driven by marketing companies, yeah. uh, which they and can also drive. Behind they it, can also yeah. drive studies, but a lot of them drive anecdote. Like, hey, this guy lost thirty pounds doing, you know, our special program or whatever. Right, right. right. Or when it's one person, you know, who's having experience. That's a really good point. I mean, how I mean, how do we filter out, or how we how are we objective with with what, and how do we? I mean, I guess a lot of that comes with just experience. It reminds me of when the IFYM crave and the uh, cheat meals all came. Like, I could wrap us, I could attach studies to show why having a cheat meal is good for you. I could wrap studies around and show you why you know following your macros is good for you. But I know from my experience from the thousands of people that I train that allowing someone or telling scheduling them a cheat yeah. day in there is not successful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not long term. That what that ends up doing is it ends up giving it's them a these psychological cr- battle. It is. They it, can't kick. And when you, and when you've trained enough people, you realize that the psychological piece is much bigger than the macro exercise and all the other pieces. And so when you understand that, and I wouldn't understand that had I not trained all these people, then you can refute some of this science that's out there that's like, okay, well, you're right. The science does show that in a controlled, perfect environment. If you eat this way, you can lose weight, you can do this. But I know off of the tons of people that I've trained that nine out of 10 people that I give that- Won't be able to stick to it. Yeah, won't be able to stick to it, will create bad habits from it, may have some autoimmune. I mean, you're going to get all this other stuff with it. So I think a lot of the- objectivity from us comes from just the experience of you know seeing enough people and when you so when i see a study or i see something come out uh, right away i'm going to apply it to like okay the people that i've dealt have with have i seen this before right have i seen that leads, have i seen this yeah. before what does this look like i mean even like with the the ketogenic diet i mean those that have been listening to this show for a very long time remember I mean, it was. I was real quick to come out. I came out and said how awesome it was, and then I was real quick to come out and counter it because I saw right away the tendencies that it could lead to, yeah. like of, of of bad, still eating bad. So yeah, ketogenic so great. All kinds of studies around it, yada yada yada. But then at the same time too, that if taking people in and making them only eat these types of foods could also hurt them with their food rotation and getting other things that they need. Which for me, I know that the average person has a hard time with that. Well, I'm always skeptical with a one solution answer. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just, I can't accept it. It's always depends. It's, it, it just never, it never works out like, I mean, one plus one, you, you hope is going to be two always, right? But that's just not the case with anything else. Well, it is in math, but not in science. Not science. Right. M- math is that way. Science isn't that way. Mm-hmm. Science is not always one plus one. Well, equals. context matters, especially with nutrition and exercise, right? Just, there's so many variables. So it's like, I just want to see... You know, yeah, percentages I can get behind. You know, like this has worked X amount of times. Like we've been able to replicate this so many times. Like I'll pay attention to those and be like, okay, that looks like they're in the right direction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I, honestly, in a perfect world, you you combine the two of them, right? Yeah. And if you if you see a study that proves this, I'm looking for antidote that complements that or contradicts it or both. Mm-hmm. And then to get collectively, I'm looking at all of it. I'm looking at okay, thousands of people have had success following this protocol. If the negatives are pretty slim, then that's that's right. decent. Right. And and the and studies- some, sometimes studies are done and you're like, why why did we fund this study? It was ridiculous. There was a stu- I posted it in the forum. It was a study on uh women and gay men. Women and gay men prefer uh, or more attracted to uh, men who display higher uh, signs of testosterone with more muscle and who who are a little bit more manly. I'm like, really? Did they have to fucking pay for a study for that? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Like, it's so stupid. There was another study. This was a government-funded study. Like, I'm going to find like, it. What? I'm going to find it because it was- Shared on the phone. Oh, boy. Nobody wastes money like government, I'll tell you. There was a study where they studied the the like the like the mechanics of uh, parking lots, and they were trying to figure out a, a way to make parking lots more efficient. And so they studied- how do parking lots fill up? So if you have a store, so let me ask you guys this. You guys, have never, you don't need to do a study. 
If I have a store here, <laughs> which parking spaces are going to fill up first? <laughs> the closest. Maybe in the front. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they spent, bro, they spent like $700,000 on the study and they concluded- and That could have gone to curing cancer. Yeah. They concluded <laughs> the parking assholes. spaces closest to the store filled up first and then they moved progressively further away. Uh, like, get the fuck out of here with that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Anyway, check it out. We have the best fitness videos on the planet- Actually, we just won an award that we invented. Yeah. We actually gave ourselves an award. Right. This is also the final month that somebody can get involved on the forum for a one-time fee. That's right. Oh, yeah. So uh, Mind Pump TV, that's our YouTube channel. If you want to get on our forum, pay a fee once, be in there for life next month. That changes forever. That's at mindpumpmedia.com. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>